Hello everyone, my name is Tim Hansen, and today I'm going to be showing you how to configure a wireless network on SonicWall's Wireless Network Manager. It's going to be a pretty straightforward setup, configuring really only the basic settings needed to get a wireless network up and running using a SonicWave access point. Your actual deployment likely would utilize or tweak additional settings in the portal, but as far as this video goes, I don't want it to be an hour long, so I'll just go through the really minimum motions needed to get things up and running. Alright, and if you're the sort of person that likes a nice list, this is, at a high level anyways, the steps I'll be following here today. Alright, so... I'll go ahead and dive into the WNM section on the Capture Security Center curtain. And once that loads, the first thing we'll see on the dashboard is that we have a unmanaged access point. Any access point that is licensed for WNM will be shown here in the unmanaged state. And this will let us configure the settings for the access point or points before they're installed at the physical location. You'll see a bit later on in the video, once we do add this access point to a zone, the access point will then move into an off state. And this means that the access point is configured and ready to be installed, assuming it hasn't already been installed at the location. And then once the access point gets powered on and connected to the internet, it'll reach out to WNM automatically, grab its settings, and begin doing its thing. If you're using a SonicWall firewall, however, you'll want to make sure that the firewall isn't set up to act as the access point's wireless controller, which it will be doing by default if the access point's management traffic is going through an interface on the firewall set to a WLAN zone. Or if you've created a custom zone with the wireless security trust. Okay, and there's KBs out there to walk you through how to stop the firewall from acting as a wireless controller if this is in fact occurring in your environment. I'm not going to go through the step by step again just for time's sake today. All right, so the first thing I'm going to want to do to get things rolling is to head over under network and then network hierarchy. And here is where you will ultimately organize the hierarchy of physical locations for this MySonicWall tenant or WNM tenant. You have locations which are typically defined as a city or maybe even a specific street address of an office or location. And then you have zones, which one or more access points will be broadcasting their signals to, right? So something like if there's a multi-floor office building, you might list the zones as floor one, floor two, and so on. Or if the location is smaller in size, maybe something like administrative office or just office or lab or something similar. Okay, so how you set up or organize the locations in the zones really is going to be dictated by your overall deployment. The size, the environments that the access points are installed in, who they're intended to broadcast the signal to, etc. For me, I'm going to use something very basic, so I'm just going to go ahead and edit the default location and name it something simple like Ottawa Office. Okay, and then if I click this little edit location icon, I'll insert a random street address, not my actual address. And we can now see that the system will reflect the location on the map as the address we just put in. And then next, what I'll want to do is I'll want to edit the default zone. And all I'm going to do for now in this section is to rename the default zone to something which explains where the access points are being installed. And by chance, the area they're covering. And you'll see that we'll actually return to edit the specifics of the zone towards the latter portion of this video. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to rename it 
ninth floor, assuming that our fictitious Ottawa office is, in fact, located on the ninth floor of the building. All right, and then next, what I'll want to do, if applicable, of course, is to define any security policies we intend to use. We don't need to look at each of these in detail. They're actually pretty straightforward to configure. But just so you know what's available for security services on Sonic Wave access points, we've got content filtering, capture ATP, cloud antivirus, ACL and GOIP slash botnet security, and then lastly, application control. Just something to note, security services or policies would require the advanced version of the license in order to function. And there are specific use cases suitable for the advanced license. However, in most cases, it's not needed as there's typically already a firewall at the edge of the network providing these types of security services. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on and head over to SSID policies. And this section is where you would set up the SSID or multiple SSIDs for your environment. So first, let's change the name of the SSID group. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and edit the default SSID. Again, you could delete it and create a new one. I'll just for simplicity's sake, go ahead and edit the default one. I'll rename it corporate, review the authentication settings, which look okay for me in the default configuration. I'll maybe just throw in a random passphrase and select the VLAN ID for this specific SSID. I can review the advanced tab, which looks okay. And then under here is where I would select the defined security policies, assuming I'm using any security policies for my SSID. Okay, and this is pretty self-explanatory. This is where I would set up a guest portal of some sort in a hotspot type deployment or perhaps inter if you're entertaining one of the various authentication methods for users, I could select the appropriate option here under the guest portal tab. Okay, and now that this is saved, I'll go ahead and maybe create a second SSID for my guest users. I'll use a passphrase for guests coming into the office. And then maybe I'll go over to guest portal and use the click through guest portal. Having guests acknowledge the usual terms and conditions that we're already used to seeing when connecting to random hotspots or retail hotspots or maybe at the airport or something similar. All right, and then once I'm satisfied with my SSIDs, I'll move on and head over to AP or Access Point Policies next. And this, of course, can be found here under the Policy section. The Access Point Policies section is where you would configure settings intended on being applied to one or more access points. So if, for example, you had five access points and wanted them to all be broadcasting the same SSIDs or maybe have the same 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio settings. This is where you would essentially define those settings. I'm going to name my AP policy something similar to my zone and call it ninth floor access points or ninth floor APs. I'll want to make sure the correct SSID group I created or modified is selected here. And then set the time zone to match the geographical location. So I know the city I'm in isn't actually in this list, but I can instead use Toronto, which will place us into the Eastern Standard Time Zone. Okay. And you may, of course, need to do something similar if the city you're in isn't in this list and it's by no means all inclusive of North America or the rest of the world. Okay. And then you can go through, if you want, each of the tabs to see what settings are needed for your specific network environment. 
And again, just to keep this video to a reasonable length, we won't go through each of the tabs here. I'll maybe just open up uh, the wireless intrusion detection and prevention tab and toggle all these on. Just so we can actually say we've configured something for the policy. All right. So now at this point, we're actually ready to add the access point into its zone. Okay, so if we go here again under network and then into zones, we'll be able to edit the zone and add the access point in like so. Okay, so now what I'll want to do is to modify or at least review the settings that are configurable to each specific access point. Okay, so you'll see what I mean here if I go under network devices and then edit the access point itself. So there's settings under here that can be configured on a per access point basis. And one of the things I'll change Again, just to say that we have changed something is to nudge devices over to using the five gigahertz frequency. Okay, and that's obviously through the band steering feature. And then secondly, I'll perhaps select the 2.4 gigahertz channel to the channel I know is the least used in our region of the office just so we're not intermingling with other alike 2.4 gigahertz channels. And then I'll also drop the transmit power as we definitely do not need to be blasting the signal to the next building over to ours or to the restaurant across the street. Okay, and then once this is saved, the access point will essentially be able to receive its configuration once it communicates to the wireless network manager and it'll be ready to start broadcasting its signals and start to serve clients. Okay, so that's a fairly straightforward walkthrough of configuring a wireless network in WNM. Once you've set up really a, a simple wireless network similar to this, feel free or you'll want to actually go back over all the available settings, the more advanced settings, and tweak them to your specific needs. Okay, so once again, thanks for joining me here today, and we'll see you next time.